Hi there, my name is Kenzie. I'm offering you a Hatha yoga practice here in the Everyday Counts program space. Uh, please know that I'm only here to make suggestions, that you can take breaks, you can press pause, you can grab a chair, just whatever you need to have the practice that feels right for you today. Uh, today I would like to use a yoga block, so hopefully you've got one or something like it you can work with. Um, but we can always work around um, the practice without a block if need be. So let's begin by finding a comfortable way of being. It might be lying down on your back. It might be sitting comfortably upright. It might be kneeling or sitting on this useful little block. Ah, once you're comfortable, perhaps close your eyes and begin to breathe through your nose if you can. Allow yourself a few moments to simply arrive and to feel your body beginning to settle onto the support beneath you. And with your eyes closed, your awareness is starting to draw inward, helping you inhabit your own inner landscape. You know, tuning into your thoughts, your feelings, your body here in the present moment. And you can begin to notice the movement of your breath, even in this position of relative stillness. Can we soften the belly to receive the inhale? Perhaps soften the shoulders as we release the exhale. And this isn't the most complete inhale or exhale. This is a, a soft invitation to simply Deep in the inhale. And to lengthen the exhale without effort. This is a, an invitation and allowing. And your mind will wander. I invite you to come back to the movement of the breath. And the inhale, soft and deep. And the exhale, softer and slower. slow down our breath and our thoughts begin to slow down. As our thoughts slow down, we begin to inhabit the present moment more fully. And the present moment is where the body always resides. And the body is always present. So let's notice the presence of our own body. Again, notice where your body feels supported by the floor. And perhaps notice where air and clothing touches your skin, helping to define your own borders. And notice the movement of the breath, expanding your body with the inhale that inward movement with the exhale. We'll simply pay attention to the next three or four breaths. The inhale, soft and deep. And the exhale, softer and slower.
If it suits you, press a hand to the belly, a hand to the chest. Ask yourself why you're here. Trust your answer, hold it dear. Slowly releasing those hands, opening your eyes. So we will be beginning our practice in an upright seat. So if you're lying down, slowly roll over to your side. Make your way up to that comfortable seat. If you're seated, you might want to give your legs a shake or sit in any other comfortable way. And what we're doing to start could be um, done sitting on a chair with the legs out in front of you cross-legged kneeling, whatever allows you to access the upper body. Yeah. You can close your eyes if you want and simply peek at me as you need to. We're going to start by sitting up tall and floating the right ear to the right shoulder. Slowly back to center, left ear to left shoulder. Let's try that again. Right ear to right shoulder. Left ear to left shoulder. And we'll come back to center, sitting tall, turning to look over the right shoulder. And slowly back and looking left. And back once more, either side. Simple neck direction. And we'll meet back at center. Drop the chin down to the chest. Now lifting the head to center. Long through the neck as you lift the chin. The gaze tilt the head gently back. And once more, either direction, dropping that chin forward. And then lifting that chin, gently tilting the head back. And back to center. Yeah, we're going to float our arms down by our side. Some of us, the fingers will be floating. Some of us will have our hands on the floor already, or you're holding onto the sides of your chair. So as the right ear comes to the right shoulder, that shoulder's going to drop, the left shoulder's going to lift, it will slump to the side. We'll try the other side, left ear to left shoulder. We'll lift to the right, drop to the left. And we'll do that once more either side. You might feel a little squeeze to the waist on one side as the other side stretches. So we're going to grow this movement a little bit more. You could stick with what we just did, or you could reach for the floor on the right side. Lift the left arm up. You could stop at the shoulder here, depending on what's happening for you. And then we'll come back. Reach for the floor on this side. Reach through the other arm. Let's do that once more either side. And again, we could stop with hand to the shoulder. We could lift through that bent arm. I'm starting to notice from side to side how it feels to move in this way. Ah, great. Again, we'll come back to center. So we'll try this with rotation. We're not gonna, there won't be as much movement here, but let's turn to look over the right shoulder. The right shoulder will draw back, left shoulder will come forward. And slowly back. As we look left, let's draw the left shoulder back, right shoulder forward. And back to center. Let's do that once more either side. Notice how your hands might float forward and back. With the movement of the shoulders, we're going to turn to look left. And back. And now we'll drop the chin to the chest. We're going to round forward through the spine. 
And then maybe as we lift the chin, the gaze, we're gonna lift the heart, draw the arms back. And let's grow this a little bit. As we round forward, you could give yourself a hug. And as you lift the heart, the gaze, the chin, you could grow wings and reach them behind you. And we'll do this a few more times. You might notice the pelvis tilting back a little bit as you round forward, and as long as that feels okay. You can just go with it. It's a bit of a cat-cow type movement. You could hug yourself with opposite arm on top. And you could reach those wings out in any direction. It could be up high or down low or somewhere in the middle. Let's do two more. And we'll meet back at center. Yeah, notice how that feels in the body. Let's release our legs. That was a long time to sit, so thank you for that. We'll lean into the hands. We'll give those legs a shake. Good. So familiar movement here. Let's lean into those hands. Let's spread the toes. We're going to make fists with our toes. And then spread the toes wide. A couple more times. Just little toes for fists. Fists for toes. And then we'll make that movement a little bigger. So spreading those toes, let's flex the feet. Press the balls of the feet away, point. We'll do that a few times. Starting to awaken the legs. There might be some feelings of stretch or engagement through the thighs, through the calves. Now let's start to circle from the ankles. I know we do this in almost every practice, but I just love awakening those feet. I think they feel ignored sometimes, so it's nice to really focus on the feet mobility and strength. We're changing direction. We're inviting blood flow and awareness into our hard working feet. Let's come back, let's shake it out. Shake out the hands, they're hard working too. And we'll come back to some familiar movement here as well. So we're gonna lean into the hands, take the feet wide. Both knees rock to one side, and then the other. We'll do this a few more times, slow and steady, knowing you can move at your own pace. This is your practice. Uh, so I'm gonna add a familiar twist here. So we'll meet with the knees at center. As the knees fall to the right, lean into that right hand, sweep the left arm off the mat, circle that arm around. And then slowly reach those fingertips away as you come back to center. Knees will come to center, knees fall to the left. Let's sweep the right arm around. And then once more, either direction, slow and steady. And sweep that arm around. Imagine rotation from the base of your spine all the way to the crown of your head. Slowly back. Other side. And we'll meet back at center. And let's Keep it moving and move right onto hands and knees, tabletop position. So if you need a blanket under those knees, please feel free. If you need to support those wrists in any particular way, please feel free. You're always welcome to come onto the tops of fists or onto forearms at any point here. So we've done a little bit of extension and flexion of the spine already from seated, but let's come back to it again in a familiar way. So we can tuck that tailbone under and begin to slowly start to round. You can turn the tailbone up and slowly begin to arch. You might close your eyes and drop into this movement, leading with the tailbone, allowing every vertebra to follow. Couple more, either direction. Noticing if parts of the spine want to move all together. 
whether you can kind of gradually articulate slowly up the spine. Noticing what you notice. And we'll meet back at center. Let's shake out the hands. And we'll do another uh, tabletop base movement. This is for side bending. So notice my front foot. I'm gonna lift the foot, keep the knee on the mat. I like to flex my foot a little bit and feel like I'm kind of pulling it to my butt. And now we're gonna rotate the lower leg out to the side. As we do, I want you to shrug your shoulder closer to that hip on the same side and maybe bring your ear to your shoulder. Yeah, it's a little side bend. We're going to bring the foot back, the head back to center. Let's lift the other foot. And now we're rotating it out to that side. Shrug head to shoulder, shoulder to hip. Same side. And we're back to center. So let's do this a few more times in either direction. It's a bit like cat-cow, but for side bending. Imagine your spine in this gentle sideways C shape. Or this gentle arc. I'm starting to feel the side waist awaken with strength as we shorten that waist as we hug shoulder to hip. And we'll meet back at center. Again, we'll shake out the hands. We have one more movement to do from hands and knees. And this will shift from having weight on the hands to having weight off the hands. So hopefully this will be okay to do at this point. I know the hands are getting tired. So let's rock the hips from side to side. And then we'll rock over to one side, circle back through our child pose. We're gonna rock to the other side, circle forward onto the hands. So yes, the weight's on the hands now, but then as we shift back, we give our hands a little break. So we'll circle a few more times in this direction. You can choose how far you wanna go in each direction. This can be a tiny circle. This can be a growing spiral. You might close your eyes and kind of just notice what's happening for you as you let the hips circle around the body. All directions. Let's change the direction of the circle. Again, lean into it. This is a beautiful warm up for the hips and knees, but also for the wrists and shoulders and hands. So let's circle three more times in this direction. And we'll meet in a child pose. So as those, drops hip, those hips drop back to the heels, why not widen your knees? Let those hips keep dropping. We'll walk the arms forward. Let the hips drop towards the heels. Maybe close your eyes. And let's find that soft, deep in-breath. Softer, slower out breath. Couple more. Wide knees make space for that big belly breath. So we'll meet back at center. We're gonna to come to kneeling with your hips off of your heels and we'll use the block and the block is always optional. I'm gonna invite you to place the block between the thighs, below the groin, above the knee. It's just that short end facing. And it, of course, if you don't have a block, that's okay. It doesn't have to be there. You'll be kneeling just like the rest of us. Um, from here, um, we're playing a little bit with twisting and with engaging the core here. 
Yeah, so I always like to imagine a big beach ball just because it allows me to do this little invisible squeeze and that starts to get those muscles under the armpits and around the shoulders quite active. So that's just a bonus. At the same time, I'm going to invite you to kind of squeeze your bum a little bit and as you do, you're going to notice you're squeezing the block anyways. So you squeeze the ball, squeeze the block, squeeze the bum. I'm going to take everything back with us to notice it's not a back bend. My torso is nice and long with my thighs and then it's coming and I'm going, you know, quite deep into this, but you don't have to. We can just play with coming back a little, coming forward a little. Because this is quite the challenge for the thighs. We're asking them to be long and strong at the same time. And especially if we spend a lot of time sitting, that's the opposite of what our thighs have been practicing for. So if this is challenging, that's okay. We're going to do three more if you want to, but you could also stay upright and rest. Catch your breath. Uh, two more. You'll also feel that strong core when we squeeze the block, we start to engage the deep transverse muscles. Yeah, so that's probably helping. So let's come up. Let that go for a moment. Soft shoulders, maybe hands to the belly. I'm going to keep that block where we where it is because I'd like to now add a twist. So when we twist to one side, we'll be leaned back, but that's optional and you're still going to get lots of benefit even if you don't go back with the twist. And the other idea is because we've got this beach ball, we want to try to keep the beach ball in front of our chest. So it's tempting to just move your arms um, when you bring the beach ball to one side, but notice the difference. If I turn my chest with the beach ball, I don't go as far, but I actually activate these muscles that allow for rotation. We'll just play with it. We'll see what happens. So we've got the beach ball. We're going to give it a squeeze at the same time, squeezing my butt, squeezing the block. Take everything back with me. Keep it in front of the chest as I bring the beach ball to the right. Yeah, it's still in front of your chest. Let's bring it back upright. Let's come up. Ooh, it's a challenging one. I know we're going to squeeze that block again. Squeeze the ball, take it back, take it to the left, keep it in front of your chest. Back to center and up. Yeah, let that go. So we'll do that one more time. We're going to skip the coming up in between, but we can just play with what's possible today. So here's the ball. Squeeze it, squeeze it, take everything back. To the right, keep it in front of the chest, rotation through the rib cage, and back. Other side, and back, and we're up. Ooh, no longer squeezing, we can remove the block. In fact, let's bring it to the floor about a torso length away from that right knee. We can bring our hands to the belly, maybe close your eyes. Soft, deep breath in, and slower breath out. One more, letting everything settle. Okay, so checking in with these knees, I know we've been kneeling for quite some time, so please feel free to use more blanket support here under these knees. I'm going to lean into the block, so make sure I feel secure on that block as I bring my other leg out to the left. Um, this could be, you know, a tiny stool. It could be a chair, um, you know, the edge of a couch. So if you don't have a block, it's nice to have something to lean into just because the floor is pretty far away and depending on your flexibility and range, it just might be uncomfortable to have your hand on the floor here. So notice I've got my straight leg foot is rooted. If I need to lift up onto the inner edge, that's fine. If I need to bend the knee a little bit, that's fine. You know, bring the leg a little further forward or back. That's experimenting. That's letting this um, practice really support your body uniquely. So please feel free to adjust. We're gonna float the top arm up. Just, you know, again, we could stop at the shoulder. We could reach through the elbow. We could reach the arm overhead. 
We're pressing down through the straight leg and trying to create some, some reach, some length along that whole left side. Yeah. Notice how that feels. Stretch long, reach long. And then we'll turn the hand away. We're gonna reach the arm down the body. And as we do, I want you to reach strongly and see if you can feel a little firmness at the waist here. Yeah. And we'll bring the hand up again. And again, turn the hand away, reach it down the body. And this is where, once you've reached it down the body, I'm gonna ask you to lighten your hand on the block, maybe come onto fingertips, keep going. And we're up. And a hand to the outer thigh, find a side bend here. An extra breath here to simply find it. And then we'll float our hand back to the block. So if it felt like a bit of a stretch to reach up or a bit too much of a challenge or to reach down, you could always hinge your hip back on the way down. And even as we come back up, you could also hinge your hip back. So I'll give you an example of that. I'm reaching down the body, shifting back. And then as I push through the bottom knee, I can bring the other hand up. So this doesn't have to be straight lateral. You can always hinge your bent knee hip back to help bring the block closer, right? And then lift into that stretch. So let's play with that, moving from side to side. And there was the press of the straight leg foot to help connect you to your core here. You could always bend the bottom arm if you do want to find a little more side bend. You could lift with that top arm up if you want a little more challenge. Let's do a few more here, knowing you can rest or you can stretch at one end of this movement if you're really loving it or just find that moving part a bit unaccessible. Again, just play here, finding your way, finding your practice within my myriad suggestions. Let's do a couple more in either direction. Notice how your breath is supporting you throughout this movement. Yeah. So from here, I'll just bring my top hand to the hip. I'm going to guide the knee in and then push off that block to come to center. Again, let's bring the hands to the belly for a moment. Soft shoulders, deep belly breath. And you might notice that one side of the body feels a little different than the other. Just use the body asymmetrically. So let's offer three more breaths here. Notice what you notice. Feel what you feel. As you open your eyes, Let's move our block to the other side. We're leaning into it to bring that right leg out to the side. Again, we're just noticing what we need from that straight leg, whether we root the sole or stay on the outer edge, whether we bend the knee or bring it forward or back. Eventually, maybe it comes right out to the side and we root the sole. I notice that my bent knee hip is just over the knee. So I reach the arm overhead and just also notice that that block is directly under the wrist, directly under the shoulder. So I'm reaching long here, trying to get that press of the straight leg foot, reach of the arm. And then I'll turn the hand away. And the first time I don't lift up, I just look for the reach. Feel like that firmness at the waist as I reach down for my foot. And then I'll reach the arm long again. I'm finding that stretch. A couple breaths. So as I turn the hand away, this time reaching the arm down the body, looking for firmness and strength here, 
Let's lighten the hand on the block. Let's lift it right off. And now we're coming into that side bend. And we reach and stretch. And we'll come back to the block. Remember, we can hinge the hip back to get there. Hinge the hip forward to find our stretch. And even as we come up, we could hinge the hip back, push through the knee to come up again. And so you can play with that. A little press of the straight leg foot into the ground is going to help you find that core strength again, that lift of the pelvic floor, that engagement to those deeper core muscles. So yeah, we're looking for this flow between the two ends of the movement. We could spend a little extra time at one end or the other, breathing into that stretch. We could slow down that movement time and challenge the core a little more. We're starting to feel those oblique muscles. Do the lifting, do the lowering, do the stretching. A couple more either direction. We can meet with our top hand on the top hip, drag the knee in, and come back to kneeling. Soft shoulders, heavy arms, deep belly breath. And notice what you notice. Okay, from here we're going to come back to seated, similar to what we were doing before. And we'll bring the feet out in front of us, and we'll bring the feet about hip distance apart. We're going to take the block and place it between the thighs. Yeah. So same short end facing above the groin, below the, uh, below, below the knees. Yeah, we're going to have soft shoulders here. Notice the challenge of sitting upright. I know it's tempting to really round, so I want you to think about kind of finding those sitting bones. If it helps sit on a block, we're going to reach out the arms. We're going to soften. Yeah. Now we're going to see how it feels to lean back. So remember when we were on uh, kneeling, we did some leaning back. So I want you to think about squeezing that beach ball, squeezing the block, and let's allow a little reach back. Yeah. And then a little reach Just play with that. Squeeze the ball, squeeze the block, lean back. It's okay to allow some rounding in the low back. I'm going to squeeze the block and come back up, finding that upright posture. Let's do that a few more times. Squeeze the ball, lean back. I know it kind of feels like you're rolling over your sitting bones here, a little rounding. That's okay. Strong belly with the squeeze of the block. And back up. Do that a few more times. Squeeze, lean back. We're rounding here, it's okay. And slowly back up, roll over those sitting bones till you're upright. Can we do one more, perhaps? Rounding, leaning back. Take it with you, squeeze that block, and we're back upright. Whew. Yeah. So take a moment here, you can rest on your knees, you can let your head hang. It's tempting to squeeze that block throughout, but not squeezing the block, it'll probably stay where it is. Good. 
So just like in that kneeling um, bit where we squeeze the block and lean back, we're again going to move that beach ball to the side. And it might feel a bit more like you're opening the arms to the side rather than squeezing and that's okay. That kind of flows with the way we do it. So again, I want you to notice your feet are close enough to really easily squeeze that block. Yeah, we're gonna start with that beach ball. We're gonna squeeze the block, we're gonna lean back. Just a little bit, as much as feels strong. Now we're gonna take that to the right. So we're gonna keep it in front as best we can. Maybe that beach ball got bigger. We're gonna come back to center. We're gonna come up. Yeah. Again, we're gonna squeeze, lean back, squeeze that block, other side. To center and up. Uh, I know this is challenging stuff. We're just playing baby steps here. Yeah, so you can rest here, but we'll go back again. We'll try it again. This time we won't come up in between. So we're going to squeeze that ball, squeeze the block, take it back to the right, and then back. Squeeze that block to the left, and then back. Rest here, lean forward. You're still sitting up on those sitting bones. So we'll do one more pose here and it's gonna be a bit of a balanced pose. We're gonna lean into the hands. The block is still between the thighs. We're gonna lift the feet, yeah. So I've lifted the feet. They can be really close. You can do the tiniest lift. And as you do, I want you to squeeze that block. We're going to think about a nice neutral spine here. We can keep our hands here just as is. This is great. Try lifting one. Try lifting the other. Now we'll take a little break. So you can put your feet down. No longer squeezing that block. You can even wiggle the hips side to side just to release any tension. And we'll try it again. So we're going to lift both feet. We're going to squeeze the block. We're going to lift one hand and then the other. Ah, just notice how it feels to be here. Maybe we could tap one toe, tap the other one, put the feet down, sit up, hands back. And this, there's no proper order of operations here. We could lean back, we could lift. We could lift one hand, lift the other, squeeze that block. Still breathing, you could tap a toe, tap a toe. Let's do it again. And down. Yeah, that's different for everyone. What I'd like to try next is simply holding the pose for three breaths, and that will be our last big effort here. Yeah. So let's lean into the hands. Lift those feet. Maybe we want to lift the shins kind of parallel to the mat here. Maybe we don't. We're going to squeeze the block. We're going to lift one hand, lift the other. So this is enough for me. But if you do need to straighten those legs like the classic boat pose, you're welcome to it. Got two more breaths here. Squeeze the block. Soft shoulders. Strong arms. One more. Put those hands down with control. Put the feet down. Ooh. Remove the block. You can lean into those hands. Take the feet wide. Rock the knees from side to side. Next, so we'll come back to those lovely twists we did from this position at the start. When we are especially working those core muscles, the obliques, um, those twisting and bending muscles, it's really nice to kind of stretch it out. And I find this twist nice for that. So let's notice if it's nice for you too. The knees fall to the right. We'll sweep the left arm around. Yeah, let's offer an extra breath here as we stretch far. Really feeling those rotational muscles stretching. And then slowly back. Let's try the other side. Knees falling left. We're sweeping the right arm around. Reach and stretch. And slowly back. 
Draw that once more in either direction. And we'll meet back at center. So for something completely different, um, just for the shoulders before we lie down, I'm going to invite you to bring your feet about hip distance apart and bring those hands behind you, fingertips pointing towards your buttocks, but kind of wide, and you could come on to fists here as well. We're going to add a little lift to the heart. Yep, a little spread of the collarbones as you press your hands down into the mat. Now let's bend the elbows. I know we've been focused on the torso and on the core, but let's focus a bit on the shoulders. We're going to straighten the arms. It's slow and steady here. It doesn't have to be a big movement, but it's going to be challenging just to maintain the bend and the straighten with that lifted heart. And notice if both arms are working together here, your core is going to work beautifully. You can feel that firmness setting in. Let's do three more. And you could have the block between the thighs here. You could notice, you know, what's engaging as I go? Is there a natural squeeze? You know, it's less the focus here, but if you're ever curious, you know, when the core is involved, chances are a block would be squeezed at the same time. So let's do one more. Some of us are really feeling this stretch through the front of the shoulders as we reach those arms behind. Ah, beautiful. Well, let's sit up, shake out those hands, keep the block nearby. It's time to roll onto your back into a reclined position. We have a few more movements to do before final relaxation. So once you're on your back, let's hug the knees to the belly and let's rock from side to side. We'll bring um, our legs to center and then come into what's called a 90-90 position. Um, so you've got your knees directly above your hips, thighs are vertical, got 90 degrees at the knees and a little flex to the feet so toes are pointed to the sky. From here, if you so choose, you could bring that block between the thighs. Yeah. Bring your arms out to the sides and what I'd call sort of a vertical goddess. Um, so my Elbows are right out from my shoulders, but I've got my forearms vertical and fingertips pointed to the ceiling. Palms could face in or forward, just whatever's comfortable here. You're going to notice a natural squeeze to the block to help stabilize the core with this leg lifted position. So why not press the low back down into the mat a little bit and again feel that little scoop. From here, and please remember this can be the tiniest movement at all, we're going to rock the hips over to the right, squeezing the block. Those upper arms stay rooted to the floor. And then we slowly come back and release the squeeze of the block. And we'll try the other side. Natural squeeze as we rock to the left hip. And slowly back. So I'm going to add one more cue here. As the knees rock to the right, just draw them into the belly slightly right at the end of the movement. And then as we come back to center, those knees are above the hips again. As they rock to the left, again, we're just going to draw those knees into the belly slightly. And then as they come back to center, they're above the hips. What really helps me is to imagine I'm drawing a smile with my knees. Yeah. And each time we come back to center, we release the squeeze of the block. And then we squeeze again. Really listening to the low back here. Going only as far as both shoulder blades stay comfortably rooted. Pressing down through those arms. Now let's do a couple more in either direction. Remember, you can take breaks at any time. You could remove that block. You could hug the knees to the belly. We're creating options for movement. We're seeing what's possible today, but everything is optional. 
Breathing and feeling is enough. Everything else is icing on the cake. All right, we're meeting back at center. So I'd like you to guide both knees over to the right. And the block could stay beneath, um, between the thighs. Or you could place the block under your shins. Yeah, you know, reach that left arm away. It could still be in that cactus arm, but the forearm is on the mat now. You could even look in that direction. I may have noticed my right hand is on my outer left thigh. That just helps me to feel anchored through those legs. You could remove the block if you needed to. Let's find some deep belly breaths here. No compression to the abdomen here. So as we breathe in, we really give those abdominal organs a healthy squeeze and breathe out that little release. So a couple more. When you're ready, you can use your hands to guide those knees back to center. A little hug of the knees to the belly, a bit of a rock from side to side. And then perhaps finding that block between your thighs again as you guide the knees over to the left. So you use your hand to guide you. You'll notice this cactus arm could lay down on the right side. I'm removing the block but placing it under the thighs um, or shins because it is hovering a bit and there I maybe I can rest the right shoulder blade, rest the left leg. So I've got left hand outer right thigh as an anchor. And again, as we settle into the breath here, we can feel that extra compression across the belly. We're giving those abdominal organs a beautiful massage with each deep inhale and slow exhale. Maybe closing your eyes. Now, when you feel ready, once more, use those hands to guide your knees to center or rock from side to side. And now we'll prepare for final relaxation. So if there is another pose or stretch you really want to do before our final pose, please feel free. You can press pause or you can just move through Keep moving through the first part of the relaxation. Um, if you are ready to relax, you might need a sweater, you might need socks, a blanket, a pillow. Again, press pause, grab what you need. If it's more comfortable um, having the legs bent rather than straight on the mat, I would suggest taking the feet to the edges of the mat, turning the toes in slightly and resting the knees against each other. If the knees are just bent but apart, there's gonna be a certain amount of tension in the hips and back but if you rest the knees against each other, the low back gets fairly quiet and the legs can get nice and relaxed. Arms might be away from your side. You might be turning the palms up or in. You might rest the hands to the belly or chest or wherever feels comforting. And perhaps closing your eyes and noticing if you're comfortable. 
And sometimes with eyes closed, we can notice that we need to make a few tiny adjustments to increase our comfort, knowing that your comfort matters most of all to this relaxation pose. Eyes are closed, perhaps breathing through your nose. And soft, deep in breath. Softer, slower out breath. Let's imagine that we can send our breath to different parts of the body. And rather than filling that part of the body with breath, we are going to fill it up with awareness. So let's start with our feet. Inhale, fill your feet with awareness. Exhale, let your feet relax. Inhale, feel into your feet. Exhale, feel your feet relax. I feel like it's a, a surrendering to gravity. It's letting my feet get a little heavier. We'll try that with the next couple of breaths. Now let's move to our legs. Inhale, fill up your legs. Exhale, both legs relaxing, heavy. Soft. And a few more breaths like that. Inhale, fill your legs with awareness. Exhale, both legs rest and settle. The next in breath, we're filling the whole torso with awareness. Exhaling the whole torso heavier, softening, settling. Next, inhale, filling both arms and hands with awareness. Exhaling, arms and hands, heavy, soft, settling.
the next in breath, filling the neck and head with awareness. Exhaling the whole head and neck, softening, settling, relaxing. A few more breaths like this. As we rest here for a couple more minutes, so perhaps with each inhale, you can invite that awareness into your whole body. Exhale, the whole body softens and settles. Breathing awareness right out to your toe tips, your fingertips, the crown of your head. Exhale, the whole body sinking and settling. Can this be enough to breathe and to feel? If you feel a deep need to remain right where you are for a little while longer, please feel free to do so for as long as you are comfortable. If you're ready to close the practice with me, perhaps invite some movement to your fingers and toes. Perhaps there's a slow turn of your head. You might feel like yawning or stretching. Or perhaps eventually bending your knees and rolling over to one side, resting your head on your arm. And perhaps just as slowly pressing that top hand into the floor in front of you to help guide you upright. Finding a comfortable seat, perhaps rest a hand to the chest and one to the belly, closing your eyes. Honor your own reasons for being here today.
And releasing those hands, opening your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or concerns, always feel free to reach out to us at the Everyday Counts program. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.